people are probably going to roll their eyes at this, but I feel really feel that stress is a choice. And it's a perspective and yes, there's many stressful things in your life, but how do you deal with that? Do you kind of give in to that stress or can you just take a step back and choose how you react to it and to almost be okay with where you are at at that moment? Because I was so ambitious and so determined that I was running myself into the ground. Welcome to Champions Mojo Weekly Podcast, where your hosts Kelly Palace and Maria Parker share with you what it takes to be a champion. Kelly is a former Division I head swim coach, Olympic trials qualifier, and holds Masters World and National Swimming Records, and Maria holds world records in endurance cycling, and was the overall women's winner of the world's toughest bike race, Race Across America. They'll be sharing their personal stories and wisdom, along with interviewing other champions to give you the tools you need for becoming a true champion in your own life. And now, your host, Kelly Pallas. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Champions Mojo podcast, where today we are going to talk about dealing with stress and some other valuable tools for success. Our guest today deals with adrenaline-filled days often. As an NBC Capital correspondent who has millions of people watching, tight deadlines, and is the mother of two young children, Lee Ann Caldwell knows a thing or two about stress. Achieving the position of a television correspondent on Capitol Hill is one of the highest levels a journalist can attain, but it didn't come easily for Lee Ann. She earned her way there with many accomplishments along the way. And we're going to hear about some of those. But first, I want to say hello to my co-host, Maria Parker. Hello, Maria. Hello, Kelly. I really enjoyed talking with Leanne, and I felt like I needed a nap after hearing her schedule. <laughs> Leanne has truly earned her spot at the top. In 2000, she moved to New York City to pursue her dream of being a journalist and started by waiting tables and doing freelance radio. In 2004, she launched a radio show and directed it until 2012. Then she went to work for CBS as a political writer and also worked at CNN as a political writer and producer. And it was in 2014 that she landed her Capitol Hill assignment for NBC. Leanne had all, has also won awards for her reporting on news, such as rebuilding New York City after the 9-11 attacks. Hurricane Katrina coverage, and she was the first journalist to interview ex-presidential candidate John Edwards after his cheating scandal. Her story is great, and I can't wait for our listeners to get some of this champion's mojo. Absolutely, Maria. Me too. As you know, we did this interview on the road in Raleigh, North Carolina, where I met up with Leanne, where she and I were attending the NC State Swimming Alumni Weekend. Leanne was a scholarship distance swimmer at NC State while getting her degree in communications and political science. So without further delay, let's go to Leanne's interview via our road trip. And now it's time for the road trip segment. Leanne, welcome to Champions Mojo podcast. We're so glad you're here, Leanne. Thanks for taking the time. Yes, I'm, I'm excited to be here. Thanks for asking me. Well, Maria, I feel like we have a celebrity here with us. It's just crazy. <laughs> Leanne, as we've done in, in our introduction, we know that she's got a great background as a, a distance swimmer. And so um, that was a while ago. So Leanne, can you kind of update us where you are, what you're doing? Sure. Um, yeah, it has been a long time <laughs> since <laughs> I was a swimmer. But so now I live in Washington. Um, I work for NBC News and I cover Congress. And so what that means is my office is the United States Capitol. So that's where cool. I go every day. That's cool. where I spend many, many hours hanging around in hallways, talking to senators, talking to uh, members of Congress. And yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a phenomenal job. I love it. Are you still swimming? I don't swim very often. When I got pregnant with my first kid, something had to go and I dropped swimming, sadly. I still exercise, of course, but swimming practice times were during bedtimes and it just didn't work out. So I haven't swum very much lately. But you're doing yoga, right? Or do you do yoga still? 
yeah, I do yoga. I ride my bike to work, um, which is actually 10 to 12 miles one way. Um, so I ride my bike to work a lot of days and home and it's uphill home. So it's good exercise. (laughs) Yeah. So I have like, I'm very active. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. You're, you look like you've stayed in great shape. I oh, mean, just well, so that's, I'm sure that's part of the, the feature of getting out there in front of the camera is taking care of yourself. Well, it's also not just that, but when you take care of yourself, you just feel so much better. Yes. You have more energy. You can survive the day so much better. Um, your mood is better. I just find that eating and staying active is just critical. It's eating well, I should say, and staying active is just really important for me. Do you eat well? Yes. Extremely. What kind of a diet would you say? You so I don't really adhere to anything specifically, but I eat a heart, as little sugar as possible. So I really try to stay away from sugar, just whole foods in the sense I don't eat processed foods really. So not fruits, vegetables, lentils, meat, meats, grains, you know, stuff that's real, not yes. out of a box is great. my go-to. Well, I feel like you are at the top of your game in a career that is so competitive and so fast paced that it's like talking to an Olympic gold medalist in journalism and being a correspondent that mm-hmm. you are. So what routines do you have? Like you're, you, how old are your kids? And and like, you're not just juggling a career. You're a young mother with young kids. So Mm -hmm. how does that look? Like, what does a day look like for you? So yeah, my kids are four and six. Gosh, what does my day look like? I mean, routine is something I don't think about. It's just something that happens every day because you have to get everything done. So my day is I get up anywhere from six to six 30. I'm not really that early of a riser. Um, and I, you know, get ready for work, take shower, do all of that stuff. And then I get my, you know, feed the kids breakfast, get them ready for school, get them out the door. My husband usually takes the kids to school and then I go to work and then I'm at work anywhere from you know, it depends on the day and it depends on what's going on. So I'll sometimes on a wonderful day, I can leave at five 30, but most days I don't get home till about eight o'clock at night. I really try to get home before my kids go to bed. It doesn't happen that well. I try not to let it go more than like three days a week of getting home after my kids go to bed. So that's hard. And then when I get home, I just, I eat dinner, clean up the kitchen because my husband's been doing the, having kid duty. So he usually goes to the gym. I pack lunches for the next day and then I read the news and then I like sit down to catch up on what I've missed for the past couple hours on my email. And then I read the news until I go to bed basically. And then I go to bed. Um, you know, a lot of times I have to work a little bit more after the kids are asleep, um, before I go to bed. And so that's kind of how it is. And that's why when I said that I ride my bike to work a lot, because I try to incorporate like this, my exercise with a purpose. So I ride my bike to work because it's my commute and it's about the same amount of time. It takes a little bit longer, but it ensures activity, my physical activity. And that's how I feel like I that's get in my workout. exercise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a beautiful combination of commuting and, and riding. I have to ask, do you shower and change at work or do you just somehow glow instead of sweat like the rest of us? I shower and change at work okay. when I ride my bike, <laughs> except for in the winter. <laughs> I don't uh-huh. have to cause it's freezing. Yeah, you don't right. sweat. So, right. <laughs> it's fine. But yeah, I mean, I'll put my makeup on and, you know, change my clothes and stuff. I, yeah. So I ride my bike anywhere from two, around two, twice, two days a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so great. on the days you don't ride your bike, when do you have time to work out? Um, so I only exercise two to four. So on the weekends, I always go one day on the weekends. I'll go to like an orange theory class and then, or a yoga class. Sometimes when I wake up in the morning, I'll, if I'm not doing anything that day, I'll do some yoga, just about like 10 or 15 minutes just to move my body. And yeah, so like sometimes I'll wake, when I wake up in the morning, I also do like push-ups, 
you know, body weight squats, that sort of stuff for about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, I only do that like once or maybe twice, once a week, probably. So, I mean, it's just so random. Like I also haven't exercised in two weeks because it's been really busy. Really busy. <laughs> yeah. So, and I was traveling and you do pick up your kids probably. And, and I mean, I've noticed now that I'm around my grandkids, I'm stronger because I'm squatting all the time. <laughs> oh, I know. And also, yeah. And also my job. I mean, I don't sit a lot in my job. Like I'll yeah. get 15,000 steps in a day. Oh, easy. Wow. Oh, well, there's your workout. Yeah. yeah. And then when I take the Metro to work, you know, I, I either ride my bike or take the Metro to work. You know, it's about like three quarters of a mile walk to the Metro. It's like half a mile walk from the Metro to my office. And I do that twice a day. So I'm like, I feel like I'm very active. I'm not sedentary, even if I don't have a a set workout in that day. Yeah. I want to know, are are you right now at the top of your game? I mean, do you have a big ambition for something beyond what you're doing? I know I, I, I read an interview, you thought it'd be fun to to cover the Olympics one year, yeah. but you can't because it's in the election year. I know. <laughs> um, but so I, you know, you know, we're talking, we, we want to help people know, you know, how to, to achieve their dreams. And it seems to me that you've sort of achieved a dream, but is there, is there something mm-hmm. more or is this like the, you know, are you just delighted to be where you are? It's a really good question. And I, I do feel like I'm at the top of my game right now. Definitely, I have more goals within my current position and where I'm at. But generally speaking, I mean, sometimes I'm still like, I work for NBC News. I mean, I grew up (laughs) watching NBC as a kid, and I feel like it's one of the like premier news outlets in the world, really. And the fact that I am working for them and a correspondent, one of, you know, their top reporters. It's just, it's very surreal actually. That's and so I am great. Still, and I definitely still have more goals within my current position, but those are goals, you know, I want to. So this is what you've always dreamed of doing what it's you're absolutely doing. absolutely what I've always <laughs> dreamed of. So have you visualized that your, you know, your, your whole career, have you thought of yourself, you know, standing there working for NBC, interviewing all these incredibly powerful people? Yes and no. I mean, so it's interesting because when I got into journalism, when I started my path in journalism, there's all these different like routes you could go. And so there's, um, like the behind the scenes route, like a producer job or, you know, all these other ways you can go. And so when I was always looking for jobs, I, the thing that was most important to me was that I was reporting because that's what I love the most about my job is the reporting aspect of it. I always made sure that in whatever position I was in, as much as possible, I was as close to that reporter position. And I didn't really, throughout my path, I realized that the medium didn't really matter. So it could be radio, it could be writing, you know, for newspaper with digital basically, or it could be television. But what was most important to me was the reporting component. And so I've maintained that throughout. And this kind of it just happened. And I think it happened because I knew what I wanted on my, on a day to day basis. I knew what I, how I wanted to be spending my day and I knew what I was good at. And I kept that, I kept at that and I kept trying to improve. And then it just, it just happened really. It really happened on a day to day basis. Uh So I would love to hear. So you, you go to the Hill, Mm -hmm. you meet, congressmen and senators in their offices on the hill well just no because they walk around the hallways oh the hallways yeah (laughs) so they have the way how it works is there's the capitol and 
So then there's like three, three big office buildings where all the senators have their offices and their staffs. And then there's the same three big office buildings for the House of Representatives where they have their staff and their offices. And, but they always have to go to the Capitol to vote and all sorts of things. They have meetings there. And so we kind of just hang out in the hallways of the Capitol. It's a lot of times in the basement of the Capitol, actually, because there's underground tunnels. And so you, we just, you just, reporters just hang out to like wait for people to walk by to talk to them. And then of course you're on your phone and texting and emailing with sources throughout the day, all day long. And, and then when do you uh, get on TV? Like, like, so then you, you find a story and like, yeah. give us a little rundown of how it actually, you know, I, I see you on TV talking with someone in a, in a, at a desk, right? And then you're reporting from the field or something. Right. Like yes. Yeah. So, so yeah, so we have cameras, um, throughout the Capitol complex and there's all sorts of rules of where you can have a camera and stuff. And, um, so you get on TV when you have news or when there's a show, like the show producers decide what they want to cover you when they need you or when there's news, um, you have a specific time and then you go to the camera and, that's when you're on television and then you're done. That takes, you know, five minutes and then you're done and you go back to your reporting jobs. Then you go back to talking people, talking to people or reading or whatever it is. Perhaps an hour later, they need you on television again. So you walk back to the camera, do your, do the TV bit, and then you go back to the reporting part of it. And that's what's taking till like eight o'clock at night, the more being on TV part of the day. Cause aren't, aren't the you know, halls, the office is empty after five pretty much or not? No. So what, the, what takes so long actually is actually just being around when there's stuff happening because then they actually work pretty late on the oh, hill. Okay. They'll work till seven o'clock often. Um, and sometimes later, but then, but it's also a weird week because like Mondays, they don't really start working till three o'clock in the afternoon. And then, on Fridays, a lot of Fridays, they don't work. So you have these like really intense days from like Monday afternoon until Thursday night, a lot of times. And then Friday's like a really easy day. Um, and that's where you get caught up. That's where you have lunch with sources. That's where, you know, you can actually go home at five o'clock. <laughs> Yes. Knock on wood, yeah. usually, because we're yeah. the biggest curse is um, in journalism is oh, it looks like nothing's happening today, oh. and then <laughs> something always breaks and it becomes crazy. So you never want to say oh, it's going to be an easy day. <laughs> yes. You know what I'd like to know is is what one qual if you could put your finger on one quality that you've had or developed in yourself that has helped you get to where you are. Hmm. I would say, I would say that determination, I feel like my path was a lot longer than a lot of people's. It took me longer to get where I am than it does other people in this position. I feel like in swimming, it wasn't always easy for me either. Getting up every single day and regardless of what happens or, you know, how long it takes you being totally devoted and committed and wanting it and just determined to get it. And I'm, you know, I'm trying to think of an example in my swimming life, but um, in my professional life, you know, I got laid off on my maternity leave on my first maternity leave. Wow. And that was a huge, huge setback. Also, you know, I started my journalism career with, knowing not a single person in the field, not one person. And so that's really hard, especially in this field where people you need, you, people know people and that's how you get your first jobs. Or I didn't even know about internships at the networks. I was just very far behind. I feel it was just knowing that that's what I wanted and not giving up regardless of what happened. You know, I moved to New York city after, or in my like when I was like 23, 24 to get into journalism. And 
I didn't know anyone. I ended up waiting tables for three years. Yeah. Oh I said yeah. One, one, one bio said you were in the hospitality industry. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I was a waitress. I was, yeah, you know, I you waited tables for three years. Yeah, totally. So, um, but you knew that whole time you didn't, you, you, you didn't want to give up because you, you could see yourself succeeding in journalism? Absolutely. And what I would do is I would wait tables at night to make money. And then I went and volunteered at a local radio station and wow. worked for free during the day is to try to learn journalism. And so, yeah, I would work during the day at, you know, total volunteer to learn how to be a reporter. Then I would wait tables at night. Yeah. And so I did that for almost three years and I just knew that's what I wanted. And so, and it was hard. It was not easy. And then, and then I got, I moved back to DC and then I got a um, full-time job for a very small radio network called Pacifica Radio. And I was there for many years and it was very hard for me. It wasn't a well-known outlet. It wasn't a mainstream media outlet. So it was very hard for me to get that next job too. And so my next job was a, you know, it was in the more, more established organization, but it wasn't, it wasn't totally exactly what I wanted to be doing, but it was getting me there. It was like a step. It was like a step back in some way. And it just, you know, I just, did it because I felt like if I need to get, if I want to really get what I want, where I want to be, then this is just what you have to do. And so it took me a very long time to get where I am. A lot of people come start at NBC right out of college. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. did, to get there, did you just focus on, on doing the next thing? I mean, how, how did you know it was time to leave the job, the first job that was, you know, obviously pretty good job, even if it wasn't well known, but it wasn't where you wanted to be. How did you, yeah, what, what was your thinking there? Yeah. I mean, I just knew that, and it was a great job with a great organization and great people. And like, I am so indebted to that job. I learned so much. Um, it was a great place to make mistakes and I, it, it was amazing, but I also knew that I wanted more. And so I, and I knew I, and so, yeah, I don't know. That's a really good question. I guess it's just, I was hungry, you know, mm. I just Ambitious. wanted more. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I That's, love that. So what a I testament to staying in there, waiting tables, taking, you know, the next job that might not have been your dream job, then continuing to climb this, this tough ladder mm -hmm. in this very, very competitive, tough world. So mm -hmm. did you do anything for your mindset? Something, you know, oh, like, yeah. what, what were your, what were your, absolutely. Mindset? It was, I was working that radio job. It was the 2008, it was 2008 and it was the, you know, this historic presidential election. So I was part of my time was covering Congress. I was also on the road a lot, like covering, the presidential election and I had created this kind of, it was like a podcast before a podcast, but it was an election focused. So I was doing my like reporting job for the radio network. And then I was, um, created this like module, we called it. It was a seven and a half minute election show that public radio stations would insert into their programming. And so I was hosting that in addition to my reporting job. And I was also running, I was helping to run this nonprofit in Washington that would help it taught radio to underserved kids, radio and journalism in the school in schools to underserved kids. So it was like a, a critical thinking media analysis, journalism, use your like empowerment program. And so I was doing all these things, um, that I loved all of them. And I ran my body into the ground. I, it was the day after Obama's inauguration and I got strep throat hmm. and I couldn't get rid of it. I ended up getting strep throat like four times oh. in like hmm. two months. And then I couldn't barely like wake up. I was so t exhausted and I went to a doctor and they didn't know what was wrong with me. So then I went to a naturopath and she was like, your whole adrenal system is just completely it, it wrecked. So it took me almost a year to recover from that. It, it took me six months to feel like I could get out of bed with energy. Like I was just exhausted all the time. It was kind of like, a, um, like for how people describe mono or something, but it was, it was 
constant. And so I ha really had to change. So in that year, I really kind of had to step back and I had to change my outlook on life, on my job, on my family. I didn't have kids at the time I was married though, my priorities, everything. And I learned during that time that stress is a, I, I mean, people are probably gonna roll their eyes at this, but I feel really feel that stress is a choice and it's a perspective. And yes, there's many stressful things in your life, but how do you deal with that? Do you kind of give in to that stress or can you just take a step back and choose how you react to it? So I would say that like yoga was a huge, huge component of my health and helped to change my mental structure really. And to almost be okay with where you are at at that moment, because I was so ambitious and so determined that I was running myself into the ground. And so I realized that I could still do all of this stuff. I could still be determined and ambitious, but I also need to take care of myself or it's not going to happen. It's a long story to say that it, it was a very hard lesson for me that took a toll on my body and I completely, but I grew so much and I have just changed my, I changed my entire outlook on how I live and how I work. And it, yeah, it was tremendous. Yeah. Did you change the way you looked at things or did you actually change your priorities? Um, I changed kind of everything. My diet, that's when my diet got really I good. I had to take care of myself. That's when I knew that I'm not the type of person anymore who can, who can exercise really hard every day. My body gets tired, especially with my job and a high adrenaline job. I need to counter that. So I can't do orange theory every day. And that's why I go once a week, maybe twice a week. That's why I do yoga a lot. That's why, you know, riding my bike I can do. It's not too hard on my body. I learned, you know, I spent a lot of time meditating during that time. Um, I was going to ask you if yeah, meditation played a role because I know if did. you like yoga. Tell us about your meditation practice. <laughs> right now, it's not that <laughs> I don't have much of a meditation practice right now. I mean, that is not true. I do actually, actually, I do have a meditation practice because every time before I go on camera, I have to kind of like take like at least three minutes and just... What do you do? Meditate basically. I basically like you just, I sit there and like take deep breaths with um, my eyes closed and just kind of to center and to ground. Um, and so my meditation practice at this point in my life is no longer sitting with my legs crossed every morning for 30 minutes. It is just moments through the day. I need it when I need to kind of like ground and calm at these critical moments, which is usually before I go on television. You know, every once in a while I'll wake up and if I know it's going to be a busy day, I'll sit for a few minutes. But meditation during that time was huge. It just... During that healing six months, yes. you really did real meditation. Yeah, I did. A lot of it. A lot of breathing, a lot of meditation, a lot of very gentle yoga. I didn't, I didn't have an intense yoga practice. It was all gentle yoga to recenter, really. And so I changed my eating habits... I changed my priorities. Like my family has always been important to me. My friends have always been important to me. Like people are, I mean, that's, that's just an important part of my life. Um, and so I didn't really change that, but I just had a different outlook on my own ambition and my own determination. And I knew that I could have it, but I didn't have to sacrifice my health and f for it really. And I now know I'm that person. I can't, you know, there's obviously many, many nights where I only get five hours of sleep, but I'm not that person who only gets five hours of sleep every night. I'm that person that I need seven hours or I'm, I just start to not be able to function very well. And so I started to listen to myself and to know what I needed. And cause that would actually make me better in the long run. You must as a successful person, mother, you know, wife, and you, you know, I'm sure your, your friends do mean a lot to you. You must have to say no to some things. Is that something that you are <laughs> conscious of? Yeah. My husband wishes I could say no more often to mm -hmm. external things. Yeah. Well, it's interesting in my job. 
my my job is not one where you can say no a lot. Right. Yeah. If you say no, you don't go anywhere. I suppose. <laughs> yeah. And so you always you always say yes and make it work. <laughs> so. So yeah, I I do struggle with the saying no. Not not in my not necessarily in my job because because NBC we like to say yes, yeah. like you know. And then um, I do exert like over commit myself. You know, my yeah, it's a problem. And it's not a problem. Like I I do set my boundaries, but I'm also not the person who. One place I do set boundaries is I don't really do after work social things, Mm -hmm. I go home. I mean, sometimes I have to, there's things I have to do, but you know, there's people who do those things every single night, go to dinners, have drinks with sources, whatever. And I just don't do that. I go home and I don't think that it's hurt me in my career, but that's a choice that I made because I want the little time I have to see my family and my children. I want that to be them for, I want to be there for them as much as possible. So, so yeah, so my, my meetings with sources are during the day, you know, when I can leave work at the end of the day, I I go home. So it sounds like you're really good at prioritizing at least your, you know, your family and things. And Maria and I always talk about that North star, you know, you, Mm -hmm. you can say no to things, yeah. <laughs> if you know. Yeah. There's a lot of good out there. I mean, it was it was interesting hearing you yeah. talk about the nonprofit you worked with. You, you're not doing that work anymore, I assume. No, I'm not. I yeah, that's something I actually had to say no to at the at the end. It was it just became too much. And so So there's a lot of good, you know, and, and mm-hmm. I mean, there's some and there's some things that are great and you have to say no to the good stuff to <laughs> to yeah. be able to say yes to the great stuff. Right. Totally. Well, Leanne, I would love to ask you Mm -hmm. in regards to two, two things actually. And I I want to remember to ask them. One is when you, you step back from the 50,000 foot view and you see that you've achieved this massive goal, Mm -hmm. how that feels. Let's go to this one first though. So you, you know, you are on camera, you know, millions of people are going to be seeing (laughs) you and you have this routine of breathing and centering yourself. What other like things are you saying to yourself to get you prepared for that, you know, high pressure every single day? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. And I tell myself every time, because it's also funny because I am on camera and it's not something that comes naturally to me. I actually don't like, so this is a weird trait for someone who is on television. Like on my wedding day, I really did not like walking down the aisle and everyone staring at me. Like I feel very, I'm not the, I don't need, I don't, there, there's not this part of my ego that where I need to be on television. The reason I like to be on television is because I, because of my reporting, I want to be the person to front my own reporting, which a lot of times in television, you know, people and, and, and all reporting other people write what you, what you're there or their reporting is someone else fronts their, someone else's reporting basically. And so that was important to me. So for on television, um, I really have to build up my confidence I've, and I have to, I have to remind myself that I can do this, that there's a reason I'm in this position and that I can kick butt basically. And I have to tell myself every single time before I go on television because it's not, it's not a very natural component like that for me, if that makes sense. Oh, I love it. Oh my gosh. It's just fabulous. I do too. I I so love your honesty. It's really refreshing to hear that, (laughs) you know, yeah, I'm doing this, but it's hard every time it's hard. Yeah, it is hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that I, I, you know, I know your background as a distance swimmer has to have helped you too, because you're constantly talking to yourself when you're face down on a black line. Totally. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. What was your best event? Um, The mile. Wow. wow. (laughs) Just like Kelly. We got a couple of milers here just chatting it up. I love it. Yeah. That's The longer, the better for me. I had no speed. I always tell people I would have been a sprinter if I was good at it. (laughs) I know. I would have too, man. That's why you were able to 
get as far as you have and you're well maria you here with us you're yeah i'm I'm right there too i'm i have no speed (laughs) none but i can outlast anybody just just anybody if if the race is long enough i'll win it (laughs) exactly Exactly. (laughs) maria loves that discomfort yeah that's amazing the so the second part of that question or the first part of the two parts is so you're you're here like i always feel like sometimes I feel like when we're working really hard, when one is working really hard and you're head down on a goal that sometimes you just don't even realize that you cross the finish line and you kind of look up and go, Oh, wow, I'm an NBC correspondent. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts on that on like that you have hit this kind of big goal? I'm super grateful. I feel so grateful for so much in my life, actually, for everything in my life. I know I worked hard, but also a lot of people work hard, too. And I feel like I just feel like I'm so lucky. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's really the only word. I'm super, super grateful. I think that's a great word. I think that's the word, actually. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Are are you celebrating your success in your mind? I mean, do you celebrate when you hit, when you hit a goal to celebrate? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I guess n- no. I mean, yes, internally, like I'm proud. I don't, there's no, I don't have any routine, like celebration routine, like get some champagne or let's go out to dinner or anything. I just, yeah, I don't know. And almost goals are also, they're so, they're so weird because then you hit them And it's different than swimming where you touch the wall and you're done, right? And you look at the clock and you see what that goal is and you, it's like an instant. Woohoo. Yeah. (laughs) And then when you're here and this happens, it's more of like the slow, like evolution, I guess. (sighs) Yeah. It's a really good question. No, I just, it's just because then you also have more goals too. Right, right. Well, we you know. we interview a lot of champions, like gold, Olympic gold medalists, Olympic coaches, top you know broadcasters, and people that are in your business. And it's Maria. Don't you feel that we find a commonality that that's, um, that's really it's really that true. people don't celebrate enough? Yeah. So we've been. I mean, as interesting. A, here's a little coaching for you, Leanne. <laughs> <laughs> like celebrate. I can tell you anything, but but I no. think. In terms of, uh, of increasing your gratitude and reducing your stress, looking, I call it looking back at your pile, you know, like if you're like creating a pie, you know, picking strawberries or something. If, uh-huh. if, you, if you look back at what you've achieved, it does increase your gratitude. Like somebody asks you, of course, you're going to say, reflect on it and say, yes, I'm very grateful. But, but spending a little time, you know, routinely saying, you know, I did this. Yes, I was lucky. Yes, you know good things happen to me, but I worked my butt off and I got here and, you know, that, you know, that's what it's all about. I mean, life is a process, but it's also, it's also looking back and, 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 and then you can also teach other people, you know, like, you know, this is how I did it. And I just kept my head down and I just kept doing the next right thing. But, but when you're doing that, you're also reflecting on that you are there, you've arrived at something. Yes, there's Uh more goals, but you've arrived and, and there's a lot of joy in that. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't even really thought about that before. Well, Maria and I have a little bit more age and experience. Honestly. You're, <laughs> we're less you're, successful, but older. You're a young, you're oh. a young, and we're just, uh, I'm just teasing. Um, so what advice would you give to young, young mothers? Mm-hmm. Just if there was just a piece of advice who are very ambitious towards a career, like any advice for them? Hmm. Marry a good man. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> That's Seriously, important. my—I mean, my husband. I do have to. I, he is great, and he is a super active participant in parenthood, and he's almost primary caregiver. I mean, we do share things, but you know, he his schedule. He's able to be home at five thirty, and so he he does so much with the children, and he makes dinner during the week. He doesn't, I, I'm in charge of cooking on the weekends, <laughs> um, but you know, he cooks during the week. He puts the kids to bed when I'm not home. It's seriously. Yeah. It's, besides that. Cause besides we, that. Yeah. He, um, 
So besides that, some advice for young mothers that the whole, I think Sheryl Sandberg even said this after her whole lean in Mm -hmm. book and drive leaning into everything at the same time is not always possible. And so sometimes you do have to choose and, but that doesn't last forever. There might be six months where you have to put your family for like your family, you have to step back a little bit and take care of things at home. Sometimes the family doesn't need you as much. And so you can completely lean into, to your job. And so my advice is just to go easy on yourself. And if you really listen to yourself and you want something bad enough, it will happen, but don't be hard, you know, go easy on yourself because we just, the hardest part is we don't know what the timeline is. I have found we don't know when it's going to happen for us. When you get to where you want to be, it might be in a year, it might be in 15 years. So just keep working and trust that it'll happen and give yourself the space when you need to really it's kind of convoluted but no i think no, that's awesome i, I love, love that, that advice. advice i think that's love it. beautiful and oh, so true you. i'm not a young mother but i'm going to use that advice too <laughs> yeah i'm 56 and i have ki- i've had kids and now i'm doing what i dreamed of doing when i was you know wiping noses so i i think that's, that's really amazing. true I, I often tell my my kids who have kids, you can do it all. You just can't do it all at the same time. Right. Yeah. I mean, Maria, you know, raised four kids and homeschooled them. Oh, my yeah. God. So. Well, I mean, but the, the point is there there probably will be time. And, it's, and if you have ambition, you know, it's hard to wait. And yet we're torn because we love our families and we want to be a good mother. So I think that's beautiful advice and I thank you for giving it. So is there anything that we haven't asked you that you would like to share that, you know, just just anything? Hmm. We always ask that as a last question. I will say where I work at NBC, like people are so lovely and it's very competitive, but amazing, amazing people. And I've learned, I've learned that over the years that you don't have to be, competitive to be competitive you don't have to knock down other people you can build people up at the same time while you're building yourself up too and I feel like it goes a long way not only in that moment but in the long run too I think that is a great answer and that ties in because we 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 will have people that are that listen we we do the even numbered shows are kind of non-swimming podcasts Mm -hmm. and then the odd numbered shows are hardcore swimming Uh so this is actually going to be an even numbered podcast so i'm thinking we're going to get some people that didn't listen to our swimming podcast but what you just said ties into the Shalane Flanagan effect. And Mm -hmm. we just love, and the more that we can promote the Shalane Flanagan effect for for everybody, but especially women, Shalane Flanagan was the first American woman to win the New York City Marathon in 40 years. And Uh, she uh brought together fellow distance runners where it used to be just competitive and cutthroat and they supported each other. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, if you're listening and you don't know what the Shalane Flanagan effect is, go look it up. But that's what you just said that, you know, Mm -hmm. it's competitive, but we still support each other. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you and I both did a retreat for the NC state women's leadership weekend. You did last year and I did this Uh year. And that was one of the things that I was so moved by was how these, this year, you know, our NC state women are, they're ranked number four. So they have a chance to get on the podium at NCAA is the best team we've ever had. And one of the best teams period in the country. So Stanford's number one, Cal's number two, Virginia's number three and NC state's number four in the whole country. So that's the ranking. Uh But I was, and the reason we are, and, and all of these teams at the top like that are that highly ranked is because they have tons of talent, you know, our backstroke lane at NC state this year is going to be like, you know, there's probably three women in there that could make the Olympic team. Wow. And so the, in the retreat, you know, you, you, we worked on supporting each other and, uh-huh. and, you know, you, you gotta be competitive. You gotta want to get your hand on the wall first, but you still have to love and support each other even yeah. to the point of people on other teams, you know, of mm-hmm. that, you know, everybody that, that I'm competing against makes me better. So right. what do you think of that? Yeah, absolutely. Someone else's success doesn't, doesn't interrupt your own success. Exactly. I love, I, I love that. And sometimes yes. we think in terms of 
you know, a minimalist attitude versus an abundant attitude. Like mm -hmm. just because someone else is performing really well, there's, there's always room at the top. Wouldn't That's you right. agree that there's, Oh yeah, room? there, yes, there is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, great. Then this has just been so fabulous. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. What a welcome. pleasure. What a pleasure to talk to you, Leanne. Thank you so, so much for your time. Oh, thank you. Thanks for asking me. So, Maria, wow, wasn't that a great interview? It was. You and I have been talking a lot about the things uh, that we learned from Leanne. But what really impressed me about her was her honesty and vulnerability. You know, this is a woman who is at the top of her game and yet she was able to share the difficulties of it and the difficulties getting there. So I really loved the interview. Yes, yes. What what were, uh, let, let's trade takeaways. You do one, I'll do one. Let's each do a couple. So what was your first takeaway that you, you got out of this? Well, I think <laughs> sort of one that speaks to me is her her discussion about how she can't work out too hard, that she doesn't that she doesn't have, if she's, if she does that, she doesn't have energy for other things. So, I mean, I think that's, I think understanding from a very successful and ambitious woman that, she, you know, the, the, the cup's not overflowing. She, you know, she has a limited amount of energy and she, she wants to spend it with, you know, in, in, in the ways that she needs to spend it on. So I thought that was a, that was a great lesson for all of us, especially those of us who love athletics and think that, oh, you know, we can we can keep on working out like we're professionals and also do everything else that we want to do. So what about you? Yeah. What's, what's one of yours, Kelly? Yes. Um, before I move on to my first one, I, I do think that's such a great point, Maria, because, you know, this this episode is about kind of reframing stress and, and dealing with stress. And and I do believe that when we run our bodies down, by over training or maybe even doing too hard of a workout that that does, it puts a certain amount of stress on us. You know, we're just, we're too exhausted to complete maybe another task that was important to us. So I, I do love that one. Um, I think that was a great one. My first one was the, when she talked about healing from, you know, having strep throat four times. So she had, she couldn't get rid of her strep throat. She said she had one complete year where she was just exhausted and that she really had to focus on healing herself. And one of the things she said she did a lot of was meditation. Mm -hmm. So I really love that idea of meditation. And then I ask her, you know, what kind of meditation practice she uses today. And she's like, well, I don't really use meditation. Oh, yeah. And then she said, yeah, I do, actually. So tied together of just kind of getting your mind set for either whether you're you're doing a meditation or you're about to do something that is stressful, like going on the air. Uh, she said that every time before she goes on the air, she takes three minutes, at least three minutes to center herself, to think about what she's going to do to be quiet. You know, she goes and in, do a space by herself. So my takeaway there was just how important it is to really set some time aside, whether it's like she said, cro sitting down and crossing your legs and doing a full on proper meditation or just in the field, you're about to do something three minutes of, you know, really a mindful practice. I love that. Yeah, I like that. And I think we've heard that from other champions. Uh, I remember Dan Plezak talking about stopping to tie a shoe, you know, that that was his little routine. And maybe it wasn't meditation. But also just this concept that this incredibly successful woman who's, you know, she's really at the top of her field you know, she, she also went through a very difficult period where she was physically worn out. I, you know, I love that she shared that with us because that can encourage those of us who may be in the middle of that. Yes, definitely. My second takeaway was kind of related, I think, to the first one, which is that you can't exercise too much or that you can exercise too much. You can, you can physically wear yourself out and not have energy for other things. She, she talked about her advice to young mothers, which was, you know, from Sheryl Sandberg's book, Lean In, you know, we, she, she talked openly about her ambition, Leanne did, about her ambition and how her, she was focused and she knew what she wanted and she knew what she was good at. But she also said, look, I wore myself out and you can be doing too much. So basically the advice was, 
you can't do it all at the same time. And that is just such great and reasonable advice. Most of us are lucky enough to live long lives and we can lean in, but we can't lean, lean into everything. And she, you know, she talked about the things that, that she, you know, gives up and she was very honest. I don't, you know, I don't exercise every single day. I ride my bike twice a week. I try to exercise three times a week. I don't, you know, I try to be home to put my kids to bed, you know, four out of seven days a week. But basically, you know, you can't do it all at the same time. Um, and I, and I think that's just a really great message because I think we're often, we're, we're bombarded with this concept that, you know, that, that we have to have it all essentially, that we have to have the beautiful family, the terrific career, you know, whatever. And, and, and you may be able to have all those things, but, but you only have a certain amount of energy and you can, you know, if you really want to succeed at something, you have to focus on just what you can focus on in order to succeed. So I thought that was a great lesson. What did you think of that? Yes, that is, that is a great lesson without a doubt that, you know, you just, you, you, you can maybe have it all, just not all at the same time. So yeah. yes, yeah. I, I love that. I love that. My second takeaway had to do with her talking about, yes, that, that she is in this, you know, competitive, very, you know, almost cutthroat industry of people trying to climb the ladder of journalism. And yet that, she felt like she could do it and still celebrate other people's success. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. That she believes in, you know, the law of abundance versus, you know, that there's, you know, that there is room at the top. She believes there's room at the top for everyone. And, And I think that's another theme that we keep seeing here that has to do with the Shalane Flanagan effect, which I just love that, you know, um, I even feel like if you help someone else, get up the ladder too, that it, you know, it helps you up the ladder. So I I think that was beautiful that, you know, she felt like she was in a competitive industry, but that she really liked to see other people succeed and that she felt like that that was kind of one of her keys to success. Yeah, I, I really like that too. And that is so true for almost everything. We can have the sense that it's a zero sum game, that if, if we're winning, somebody else has to lose. And, and that's not, that is not the case. I mean, I, we, I just came back from a, an event for my business and I was talking to my competitors and we were, we were, you know, I was encouraging that the pie can be big enough for all of us. We don't, you know, we can, we can grow the pie. <laughs> and I think that's, that's really an important attitude to have that we, that it's not, that there's no limits. We can, we can, we, you know, we can, we can be successful. We can help others be successful and that, that will, we'll, that the world will be a better place if we, if we think that way and act that way. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So Maria, what action item are you going to take out of this great interview with Leanne? What, what are you inspired to do? Well, unfortunately, or fortunately, I've already had to take her advice on the exercise thing. I was, um, I've been going, 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 and I've hurt my knee. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah. And so um, normally I would just say, okay, what doesn't hurt when I do it? You know, for instance, uh, I can't run, so I'll swim. I can't swim, so I'll cycle, whatever. Um, but I think I've decided that I'm just going to take some time off and let my um, body heal and and then remind myself that I can get back to it. But I got to be careful about that. So I'm going to take the advice that you, you can't work out hard all the time. And especially you can't work out hard the, all the time and travel and you know, be a good grandmother and be a good parent and be, and be a good business owner. You know, you have to, you have to pick one for the moment. So the thing that I'm going to let lay down right now is, is exercise for at least a few weeks until my heat. Oh my gosh, Maria, up. I, <laughs> wait a minute. Is, is the, is hell freezing over? Because <laughs> I, <laughs> I can't believe this is, this is you, my sister-in-law, my best friend here. Are you going to be able to do this, Maria? Well, I, here's how I'm 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 gonna do it. I'm gonna spend time outside, but I'm just not gonna be, because for me, I, I haven't decided if it's more important to work out or to be outside, or which which one of those things actually uh, lights my brain up. So, for the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna be sure to spend time outside, even. Okay. Not, and I've already done that today. I had a picnic with my grandchildren. So. Uh, oh, nice, yeah, nice, yeah, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. What about you, Kelly? Well, yeah. I know I, I love I love the one that your action item and for for mere mortals out there like us because you are a training animal that 
you know, I'm going to translate that into what, because I like to do yours too, but then I have one that I'm going to take action on too, which okay. is just that you don't have to work out hard every day. And, yeah. and, and I think that's that's what I'm going to take away. And sometimes you, you don't even have to work out every day. Right. I, I'm, I'm kind of on a three a day, three, I'm sorry, three times a week where I work out hard. And the other days I just get outside. Like you said, I just do some easy walking. So I love it. Um, my action item is going to be to get a hold of my mindset. I just, you know, in, in any little thing that I do, um, I just want to, I want to try to visualize the most positive outcome. So like Dan ties a shoe, Dan tied a shoe before he ran out to the mound and Leanne takes her three minutes before she goes on TV. There are just things that, you know, we have to do in life from everything from getting our mammograms to getting our, you know, going to the dentist or sitting in traffic that you just, that I want to be the one in charge of my thoughts. And so I want to take those mindful moments during the day to, to get my mind right and not let it just run amok. Oh, I like that. What, what can, can you share maybe something that might stress you out that you, you're going to particularly apply that before? We all know we've been talking about my mammograms coming up that i as a breast cancer survivor, this is always a very stressful time. Mm. And so in, in instead of, you know, dreading, you know, the week before, the three days before, the two days before, the one day before, the night before, yeah. I, I want to just, you know, I just want to visualize that, hey, it's going to be something, maybe it's going to be something really positive. Oh, everything looks great. You're good to go and visualize that and, and have that response in my body versus, you know, sp- it visualizing something that's scary mm-hmm. because I, you know, why live, even if I do get scary news, why live it all the week before? Yeah. You know? So you're going to, you're going to so, capture those, those thoughts that are running through your head saying, Oh my God, I'm going to have cancer again. And, yeah, and you're going to deny just, them and you're going to say, no, it's going to be just a great normal. It's going to be just fine. Yeah. Cause then, you I know, why that. have, why have I, why have I died a thousand, you know, a coward dies a thousand deaths you know, before <laughs> you get there. That's so so true. just, I mean, that's kind of an extreme one, but uh, you know, a less, you know, a less extreme one is just keeping the mind calm and keeping the adrenaline down. And this episode is about stress is that just the benefits, there are so many benefits of meditation of how it just lowers your cortisol, lowers your adrenaline, you know, keeps your mind kind of defrags your mind. So maybe just, I always feel like when I meditate, I have less anxiety and I have a better grasp of my, of my mind. And certainly, you know, going into meditation, I do some deep breaths. So. Yeah, that's great. I, 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 the same is true for me with prayer, just like reminding myself, yeah, okay. That, <laughs> I'm not the center of the universe. <laughs> that really, <Yeah. laughs> that really helps me. It's like, no, you know, and, and putting, putting everything in its place. That's, you're right. That's, that's so great, Kelly. Excellent. Well, we have got another one in the books here. This is episode number 34. Woo-hoo. Can you believe it? That's Yay. amazing. And so we so appreciate everyone listening. Yes. And you can find all these episodes and anything uh, you need on championsmojo.com. That's right. Thanks, Kelly. I love you. Good luck with your mammogram. Love- yes, thanks. Love you, Maria. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. This week's quote of the week comes to us from Lou Holtz. It's not the load that breaks you down. It's the way you carry it. We are so grateful that you spent this time with us today. And we hope that you heard something that inspired, motivated, and educated you. Please see below for our copy of the show notes for any links or important information referenced here. Signing off for myself and champion co-host Kelly Palace. We hope you'll join us again soon. And we know you can be a champion. Thank you for listening. You've been listening to the Champions Mojo podcast, designed to make you feel inspired, motivated, and educated. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and Google Play. Also, visit championsmojo.com to learn more.